The unique baseball field math problem. We have our shape right here. It kind of looks like a baseball field. Big dirt area, little grass area. We have some values that are given to us. AC is length of three, BD is length of six. We have a quarter circle that kind of slid over a little here. And we want to find the area of that quarter circle. Pause this video, see if you can figure it out first. But as always, I'm going to show you how we can solve it. Let's learn something. All right, first thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna extend these lines and so I can have a rectangle to deal with. So I'm gonna take the lines of AC and I keep going vertical, okay, up here. Extend that line here, same with DB. Let's extend that. And I'm going a little bit past just so I can make sure I have a level here. I wanna make a rectangle right there across to point F, all right? Now with that, let's erase some of this stuff so it looks a little nicer. All right, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's label these points E and what did I do? G. Look at my notes here. E and G. All right, so now we have a rectangle. I drew it as such. We got little right angles going on right here. What I'm also gonna do is connect FP. So I'm gonna connect FP, and the tangent to a circle theorem means that this line is perpendicular to line AB. So we have a little perpendicular going on here, tangent to the circle theorem. Remember, this is a quarter circle. Now, with that being said, FC, FP, and F D are all equal. F C equals F P, which equals F D, those lengths, and let's call that R, the radius. Okay, so we have an R here, R here, and an R there. Now here's the nice part. Since this radius, we have a rectangle going on here, E, G, B, A, the rectangle, and that radius goes up and down here is perpendicular, then that is the same length as uh, G, B, and E, A. G, B is equal to E, A. And this is beneficial to us as we work through, so this whole length is our radius, the length of GD would be our radius minus a six. Similarly, we do the same thing here on this side. CE would be our radius minus a three. So radius minus a six, radius minus a three. I can write that up here. Let's go uh, GD is R minus six and CE is equal to an R minus a three. Now, one thing here, what I wanna do is, I wanna call this angle ECF, let's call that alpha. So angle ECF, I'm gonna call that alpha, ECF, that angle measure. Since we know we have a right triangle with ECF, the triangle now, they're gonna be complementary, so let's call that uh, the angles will be E, F, C to be beta. And we can say that alpha and beta are complementary angles, meaning they add up to 90 degrees. Now again, let's look across the line here. We have a line E, G, and E, G has a 90 degree angle. And so B and this angle, G, F, D, must also be complementary, meaning we have angle alpha right there. And the same thing here, well, Complementary angles means G, D, F is beta. And so now we have two triangles here that we can see, and they're not only similar, they're actually congruent by angle side angle, angle side angle theorem, okay? So by angle side angle, triangle, uh, let's keep it, in order, go alpha, beta, right angle, triangle C, F, E is congruent to triangle, I went alpha, beta, 90, so F, D, G. 
And so now that they're congruent, we can now say that their side lengths are the same side lengths. So from alpha to the right angle is an R minus three, alpha to this right angle would be an R minus three. So FG is R minus three. Same thing with G to B, right angle to, or right angle to beta, G to D, R minus six, EF is an R minus six. And so with this, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem on one of these triangles to try to get, well, the value of R. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Pythagoras is always helping us out in these geometry problems. So we have an R minus a six squared plus an R minus a three is equal to an R squared. Let's simplify that out. R squared is an R squared here. Minus six will be a 12 R plus a negative six, negative six is positive 36. R squared here, minus six R plus a nine, negative three squared is equal to R squared right here. Well, we can cancel out one of these R squares right there. And so we have an R squared, uh, this is minus what, 18. Combine our like terms and 36 and nine is a 45 zero. We can factor this. What two numbers add to be negative 18 multiplied by 45. We have an R minus a three and R minus a 15. So our two values that R could be is R equals three and R equals a 15. Now let's look at R equals three as an option. Can that actually be a value? And the answer is no. If the length of EC is R minus three and R is three, that means that length is zero and it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out. It can't work here. So not using R minus three, that doesn't work. It's an extraneous, or I don't know, it's an extraneous solution, not a solution. R equals 15 is the value that we can use. So area of a circle or quarter circle, area of a quarter circle is gonna be a pi times an R, so 15 squared over quarter circle four. So that simplifies 15 squared as a 225. So we have a 225 pi over four units squared. And if we want to approximate that as a decimal, I have it as a 176.71459 units squared. But I like doing it with pi. So our answer here for the area of this lovely quarter circle is a 225 pi over four units squared. And that's the area of our quarter circle. Well, I hope you learned something here on this video. If you did, great, subscribe to your YouTube channel and like this video. As always here though, thanks for watching.